okay. This meeting is being recorded. Yeah. Next, next month on the 11th. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, tentatively, I should say. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. You're feeling much better. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we're winding down because it's like with me, oh, um, I think they say finals should be like the 20 something. Me, I always do finals on the last day of my class. I don't want y'all to say, oh, I got to come back for that. No. I always, right. since I've been teaching, I say, so, I so it won't be, it won't be on the, um, Easter holiday no more? Yeah, it can be that, that 18th, remember? Oh. oh I, I don't know this. Uh, anyway. Huh? I, I think I have, I don't know, every time I, 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 I don't think I could be on the island. Again? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jesus, what? Yeah, that Easter going to be here. Oh, well, you love to decide what you're going to do. Yeah. I won't be here either. You travel like too? That. Yeah, I go on to my son. When I teach y'all on the 11, I'll be teaching y'all from him. From him? Okay. Yeah, I'll be in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah, I think I could be in Georgia. Um to my son too. Yeah. I'll yeah. be in Pittsburgh. Woo! Well, send yeah. me some pictures. I never been to Pittsburgh before. Yeah, he lived there. I, I spent three weeks with him last in the, in last year, October, November. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I'll be yeah, because he bought a home, so Okay, that's yep. good. I'll be there trying to help them. Which one of this? The, the the not the youngest one, eh? The middle one. The yeah, first one? The middle. The older one. Ah, the middle one. The older one. The older one okay. Bill here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He work at Central. Yeah. Oh, that's the oldest one who worked at Central. Why well, I thought that was the youngest one? No, the baby in Canada. Mm. All right, bud. Welcome to the collection. On the shelf you go. <laughs> All right. Y'all got the assignments. We did. Yes, ma'am. I was sitting waiting, 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 waiting. I used to email. Man, I, I had some I, stress over the weekend. Sure. You see what time I do that? Yes, I'm like, she's not gonna act. She, what happened? You forget me? Forget us. Oh, oh no, I send y'all all three, so y'all know when I send y'all that I give y'all no review question. Oh, no, man, you have to give us review questions. So, I, you want me standing back to you? Because that's y'all, all them is your questions, all them yeah. assignments. Well, I already have that in my um my little booklet thing, and I said, let me. I didn't have this assigned for that. I figured it would have been something like that. That's why I do that. Cause that's yeah, chapter. I, and the other the other three chapters, the other three chapters, I will do the well, the other this chapter I will do the same, and mm-hmm. then I try to give y'all. I'll see if I'll do the review questions for y'all. We'll see, but um. Like I, um, Miss Knowles and Miss Miss Knowles and Miss Brown Knowles, like I was telling Miss Burrows that um, the the final exam will be on the 18th of April. That is the last day of class. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it'll be on the 18th when this most class, everyone gonna be partying. Huh? <laughs> When everyone gonna be party and we're gonna be testing. This, this, this should be no party. Time, man, I have no, no exam, man. People mind. All the exams, all for my was doing classes when I did my masters. I was like, these people is no one is a holiday. Eh? I have <laughs> never had a holiday. Was every time there was a holiday, 
I either had a paper due or I had a my finals. But always something because we, we with with the, with the charter bank it, it, it didn't give you like assignments like that. You had a project. Uh, and then you had, either you did the, an elective where you only had a project. So you had to, that was your final grade once you complete the project. And then you had one where the, the, the core course where you had a project and you had a final. Yeah. So it was always, they knew that. I said they always know when it's a holiday. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yep. So. The exam will be on the 18th and business of banking will be the same as you all because the exam would have been on the 17th, but the 17th is a holiday. The so. 18th is a holiday too. What? That's Easter Monday. No, Hold the 17th is a Monday. 17th? Yes. The 17th the is a Monday. The 18th is a Monday. Yeah, it's the 19th. Oh, Kevin, you're on exam on the 19th then. Yes, ma'am. I have that in my book. What would I do when I look at the wrong calendar? But, but, but I, I have two. I have two. My other class the exam on the 19th too. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that see, that's what I say. I there's one tell you have exam on the 20th oh, oh, after. No, I do my exam the last day of class. So yeah. you having it, what, on the 15th? No, the 19th. Okay. But Miss Burroughs, you say you won't be, so you have to choose which one you want to take first. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Girl. Choose which one you want to take first. Can y'all give me a second? I'll be right back. Just give me a second, okay. please. Okay. All right. Can anyone start? Can anyone start the um thing up? Tell I I turn them off. <laughs> I say, Lord, look at Miss Smith telling us again all these things. I say, Oh Lord. I... <laughs> oh Lord, I put anyway, them off. That's the, that's the chance I got. I got. I did. I did six. Seven and I have two more questions for eight. Oh, okay, well, you almost finished. I stayed up Sunday until one o'clock when I read one and I go and then I then today I sat at my desk and I do another Commonwealth Bank work. <laughs> <laughs> I do none of their work. That wasn't important today. I thought that was due. I thought that was due you know, this week, you know. That's why this week, Lord, I Everybody finishing my dummy up right here. You try and no, uh uh. Because <laughs> all I know is after no, class, it, it, it was you, but I think because it got sent later, she put it mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. uh, my stomach was hurting. Yeah. Child, they could watch. Because I tell my <laughs> boss I had to do that, and he was laughing at me, telling me I slow. <laughs> <laughs> I straight to work from 7 15. Yeah, yeah. He was telling me, Oh, you look when you wait. <laughs> look when you wait to come do this and your class tonight. On the <laughs> and, you got, and you got class. Let me see how you're going to do it. Ask your mommy to get your shoes clear. Hi, hi, Pa. Yeah, so we have two more chapters to complete, so which is quite kind of easy because one deals with pension, one deals with benefits, employment benefits, and national insurance, and all the rest. So, isn't as rough as the others because I guess it comes on more. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, so let's begin. How much persons? Seems as if everyone is here. Please. So, y'all had a chance to read, right? Because y'all know I'm reading tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. 
I told y'all tonight is going to be I select who I want to select and say explain that section. I played I played I, I'll be truthful. I played the fifth. <laughs> Yeah. Oh Lord, I gotta yeah. get Lord does. I have my struggles. Oh. Yeah, that's that. The class going. Ah, uh, that's what's killing me. I, I, uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, we'll talk chapter ten deals with employment benefits and assistance. You, I talked about the U.S. and the Bahamas. So, anybody want to pick up on chapter? to 10, you can talk about the introduction and talk about social security retirement benefits in your own little words, um, especially when it relates to the US. Ms. Knowles? On chapter 10, you said? Yeah, would you all have chapter 10 to be? Oh, we did chapter nine last class, eh? Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, remember said, my, yeah, that, my no, right, my electricity yeah. went off. That's what happened. Right, right. You said and then, yeah, because you just dropped off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we finished chapter nine. Yeah. You see, like I say, I want y'all to be. We have how much more class? We have next week. We have the following week. Man, and, and, we credit, have the next and credit and credit is what I was was waiting on. Oh yeah, I knew. But if, if you could go right over it. And I could send you um something. I was supposed to send you all something, but I wasn't feeling well. I didn't even have class last night because I was not feeling well last night. So I didn't have class last night because we talked about the five C's. Oh, character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I know. Yeah. I, um, you know, when you go over it, you, you be, you're able to understand more what you're reading. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah. So, Miss Knowles, call it. No. Okay, employment benefits. All right, this should be interesting. It is, yeah. And if y'all, you know, when y'all reach a national insurance, like I get a rude awakening with national insurance. I was like, I left Fidelity last year, March. It's March again. I'm still fighting with them with my benefits because like they said to me oh you think we pay you on what you make a no we don't we have a ceiling as to what we pay yeah Absolutely. yeah and yeah. because you retire early um, that's what i was about to say you should have waited to get exactly. your and, and uh, hold on then i broke and kicked the bucket and nobody she well, waited she wait. until invested. Yeah, she waited. Not me, John. I see somebody who waited till he was 60, during 65 that week and the next week. He croak. What did the government do with his money? Oh, wow. They don't go. That's the one thing I never understood. What do y'all do with that money? The, the, your spouse will get it. The woman is get it too? The man is get it too? Yeah. I never hear about that. Yes, ma'am. If 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 you marry it and you die, mm -hmm. then your benefits goes to your spouse. But you ain't gonna never get the kind of benefits that you was gonna get. They have one a certain amount allocated for your your benefit. You think they can give you the same amount? Not me. Give me my two dollars. Ain't nobody can get my two dollars. I broke and I work hard. Somebody can get my give me my two dollars, but y'all can give me that. Lord, I give me my two dollars. No, I laugh and I said I never said I was gonna work till I was sixty-five. Never. I said, give me my two dollars. So then they didn't. Um, they 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 missed out whole almost twelve years um contributions for me. You know, what twelve years is twelve years. Oh. They didn't have for me. They don't have for me. I had to go to Royal Bank to get a letter from them to hold on one second for me. I 
But I tell you, I send you the thing. I'm gonna tell you that you could go to 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 the, to the link right there because I went on and I saw it. Registry. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Take care. Sorry for that. Yeah, so. 12 years is missing, almost 12 years contribution is missing. They didn't even work that in my, um, when, when I was, um, when they work out what I should get. So they have to go and rework again for me. So wow. how long that it take? If it take a whole year, it's March 31st, I'll make a year since I left Fidelity. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. And no benefits of you? Nope. Wow. Yeah, so. Yeah, so that's why I say I, I'm not going to be staying there and um, 65 and then what? So wow. only thing they give me is, will give me 65% of my contribution. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and I'm fine with that, like I say, but because I have other income, so I'm fine with that. But for people who I have rental, so for people who don't, they have to stay, not me. I know staying. I see so much people die. Never get a dollar. I had a brother-in-law. He was 53. And he worked so hard in government. Who got from him? His wife. You know? Uh-uh. Let me get my own money. Nobody can get my dollars. Nobody. Give me my money. All my children are, all my children are grown. So, they, mm -mm. nobody gets my money. Nobody. Spouse. What? And I ain't divorced yet. So, what? My husband will get my benefits. No way. For him and his new wife or something to spend. What? Yeah. 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 Mm -mm, mm -mm, you know mm -mm. that power to see sometimes, boy. No, so I'm going to get everything and make sure my eyes are dark and my teeth are across. Nope. Uh uh. The national insurance, I, I've seen so many people who were talking about. Well, they put in claim, they had COVID and they put in claim because they didn't go to work and they still waiting. Yeah. Yes. So it's like, somebody's just talking about that yesterday and they still waiting for their benefits. They still waiting for, for it. When I left Fidelity, that happened to me. I, I was sick in 20, was it 2020? And I just, after I'd already left Fidelity, then I get the people check, I had to carry Scared to, to the bank. Yes. Wow. A whole year. More than a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And wow. so I don't even know what's going on with national insurance. They need to get on board with what? My Gateway. That's what they need. Whoever doing My Gateway um, system, that's what national insurance need. Because those okay. persons, yeah. and they have people manually calculating your wow. money what would they say in audit department i'm like well those people in audit department can't pay attention and like i say only because i'm a person i'm like i'm looking and as i say to anybody before you retire make sure i get the statement and make sure they have all your contribution because if i didn't get my statement and look and say okay look what happened almost 12 years yes y'all don't have for me and i show you so 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 where my money yeah so i had to go to royal bank and royal bank had to give me a letter to say wow. from that period to that period, I was working for them. So now they have to go <laughs> recalculate all over again. Wow. Yeah, so. It could have been is... a point where someone put the wrong NIB number in for you because they, we have had persons in the bank because we usually mm -hmm. can look up people's accounts by NIB mm -hmm. too. So when we look mm -hmm. it up by NIB, you have two and three people have the same NIB number. What the hell? <laughs> Yeah. We had an exercise. We had close to almost 200 persons who had the exact same NIB number. We had to send both parties back. The only the, um your NIB is unique because it tells you where you were born, which I sorry, which island you were born in, 
um, mm -hmm. time period. So it's like two, it's, it's distinct in that manner. And if you're a female or a male. So it, it, and persons who worked in IB would know how to read that. We had a man okay. who had females and IB number. And he was okay. like, well, how would you know? I said, because I went through the training and they said that this number tells you the sex of the person. Like, this okay. number tells you what island they were born in. And okay. this number is your eight, the year you were born. And the, and okay. the month, the year, your month, the sex and the island is the, is the three things. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, like I say, if, if what? If same for, if three persons having the same number? Mm -hmm. I tell you, those, those people with the national insurance, yeah. they just, they don't even care. When you talk to them, they like attitude and I'm like, yeah. and you can't, yeah, you can't ask this. You can't say nothing because they'll bury my file um, for another two years. You know, I had to write a letter to tell them if they don't sort me out, I can go to the minister. And that's when people start calling. Mm -hmm. And it's so sad that we live in a country that we have to we have to go to the minister when you're supposed to be doing your job. Yep, they have to learn. Political jobs. And if you're doing a, if they doing a favor for you, you better be buying them lunch. <laughs> yep, yep. So Miss Knowles, you could start off for us with the introduction, talking about the different retirement plans and walls. Okay. Two books. Yeah. Okay. This one I can see better. The traditional approach to retirement planning involves three pieces: social security, personal savings one or more employer um, sponsored retirement plans can be especially crucial elements in individuals plans for dealing with their loss of income upon leaving the workforce numerous types of retirement income benefits can be provided to employees many employees offer more than one type of benefit some benefits can be given to all employees whereas others may be provided as options to supplement base basic retirement plans when combined with social security and supplemented with personal savings many retirement plans make it possible for individuals to maintain their standard of living after their end from the exit from the workforce. Do you believe that here in the Bahamas? No. Because, okay, say for instance, like 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 Miss Burroughs was saying that her, mo her mother-in-law is saying that she's 65, right? She retires. She may be one of the persons who don't have to be bothered to say, oh, well, I better go get this little, little other little job because um, I can't afford it. Because, you know, there's some persons like that, you know, at the College of the Bahamas, people can work till they're 70. I had a friend who said, when they said you could work till they're 70, she was eager for that. I said, girl, you want to work till you're 70? What, 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 what kind of life you have if you could stay to the people job till you're 70? I don't want nobody tell me I have to work till I, I could work till I'm 70. And I would, what, what, what type of, what, what part of your life you enjoyed? You just go to the people job every day, work, work, work. I know somebody who worked at Fidelity and he always said to me, he said, Andrea, I'm going to retire early. And he retired 46. He retired. And he was sitting, he was fine and he still retired. You know, and so I, I say, you know, some people can do it. Some people can't. Because when you see, look, look at the most of the security officers, be that male or female, look at them. Look how old some of them are and they still work in. Look at the police officers who already retire. Why do you think? Do you think it's fair? They retired already, but government bring them back on. Do you think that's fair? You see them, no, if, 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 the gunman, if the gunman come on them, they have hair so white, half of them bending over, but they got on the khaki. What is wrong with that? You know, that means what happened? You didn't do what you had to do. So you still have to work because you got a couple of little loans or you have little children that you have to take care of. I, I just could never see it because I've seen so many um, police officers who have retired. And then when I look, 
I hear people, oh, he's a reservist. Oh, he's this. And then I get back, then what would you mean he's a reservist? He's old. He needs to go home and, and take care of the grandchildren and let some younger person be able to collect a salary. You know, and I just think it's so distasteful that we do that here. Like I tell people I still work because I have five more years to work, but I choose to leave. And so I just do a contract job. That's not a, I, I, I don't a contract job where I work at my leisure and um, I work four hours a day and that's me. And then I teach, but that's it. But you have people who go in from nine to five and they doing a regular work and a lot of people still want to do it. Yes, I may still want to work, but I would never take a job where I have to work that same nine to five and you dictate my time. No, I dictate my time. And that's how I feel, you know, but we have um, a lot of persons and, 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 and I never knew that it wasn't um, mandatory for companies to have um, a retirement, a pension plan or health insurance. I never knew Ooh. that. Yeah, we have some companies where persons just working, they don't have a retirement plan a pension plan, nor do they have health insurance. I never knew that. And so I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, so y'all working and y'all don't have no pension. Y'all don't have no medical um, benefits either. No, I never knew that. I didn't know that was, um, I thought that was illegal. I thought um, it was mandatory for companies to do that, but it isn't. Yeah, no, but I'm a citizen. Any one of you knew that it isn't mandatory to have um, a company to have health and pension? Did not know that. I didn't even know that. Well, well, I guess it depends on what type of companies, because you have a lot of places who who don't have these companies don't have medical insurance. The fast food places don't have medical insurance either. But like I say, no, you know, and and, and I ask um, my niece, she's a. HR manager and I said to her, I, you know, because I was like, what? And I asked her and she said, no, it isn't mandatory. I say, whoa. She said, no, you have a lot of companies. She said, don't do it because it's not mandatory by you. Yeah. So it isn't mandatory. So I guess some companies just don't do it. Okay. You can continue for me, Ms. Rose. Okay. Employee Benefits and Assistance Bahamas. History. Sorry. The National Insurance Program was established on December. Oh, hold, hold on. Miss, 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 um, miss, um, no. So y'all don't have nothing with Social Security Retirement Benefit? To us? Yes, we do. We have a pension plan with Kalina. No, I was talking in your book. Because you done reached to the Bahamas. Hold on, I have two books. Let me look what the next one say. Okay, this one here. I tell you how. Oh, you know I was joking when I tell you I have to have two books here. Okay, sorry. Social Security Retirement Benefits. <clears throat> the level of retirement income that can be expected from Social Security depends on many factors, including the age and the individual elects to begin receiving benefits the number of years he or she works in employment um, subject to social security taxes, the wages earned in such employment, the age at which retirement re the retirees can begin collecting. Their full retirement benefits amount, amount has historically been 65. However, this age is um, gradually increasing and is scheduled to reach 67 for those born in 1960 or later. Now, let me go on. Yeah, I just look see at the table. Um, Y'all could, uh, you know, look at the table and look and see what it's saying. Future Social Security normal retirement age, ages. Yeah. And like I say, over here, it could be up to 70. Yes, Ms. Knowles, let's finish the Social Security retirement benefits for me. Workers retiring at the Social Security normal retirement age after a lifetime of full-time employment 
at salaries equal to the OASDI wage base can now expect to receive a benefit of approximately 25% of what they earned just to just before retirement. Oh. Workers with a lower earning history can expect a benefit that is relatively higher in relation to prior employment earnings. Workers can retire earlier than their Social Security normal retirement age, but their benefits will be re re relatively lower than would otherwise be the case. So that's what you were speaking to. Yeah, it's just like here, you know, it's like in the U.S. and it's just like here. If you retire before the retirement age used to be 50, the early retirement age used to be 55. And it changed when they decided that, I guess, national insurance must have said, hey, too much people trying to get early retirement. So, and then before, if you retired at the age of 50, 55 early retirement, you was... Uh, um, years ago, you would have gotten 89% of your benefit. It was higher. But now, if you retire at 65, at 60, you're going to get 65%. Then I think it's 71%, then 72%, then it's 80%, and then goes on until you're 65. And you get 100% at 65. And like I reiterate again, who says I'm going to make it to 65? I, I, I want to make it much more than that. But, you know, and that's why I say, give me some of your all money anyhow, because I didn't give you all mine. So give me some of your all own. And, and, and like we know in the U.S., in the U.S. it's the same thing. And you have people who live here who probably lived in the U.S. or a U.S. citizen and they live here. They still get their Social Security benefits. You see their checks go into them, you know. And 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 here too, we have persons who live in the U.S. and they worked here and they retired from here. They still get their checks, benefit checks too, because that's something you get for the rest of your life. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Relationship of work history to benefit amount. Social Security retirement benefits are based on average earnings and employment subject to social security taxes which we don't have here which i know um i i i know soon whether we believe it or not soon we're gonna be getting some kind of income tax some kind of tax is gonna happen because i mean the economy is booming now because everywhere you turn you'd see a piece of property cleaning down whether it's Westridge, whether wherever you drive, I'm like, whoa, people are just billing. I see out here at Carmichael, the guy just built a, I guess, like a shopping center, a little more like, and I already see, but see, what's the Ritz? I was like, what is that? And then I see the Mexican food place, all of them coming out, Carmichael, you know, so the economy is moving, you know. The period of computing average earning begins with the year 1950 or the year in which an individual reached the age of 22. You know, does anybody know the year when um, national insurance really went on the uh, com um, computers like they really can tell you that, okay, this is your contribution? Because I never even knew that. Somebody said to me that, oh, um, anything in the 1980s from 84, from before 84 or, 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 or after 80, say, you know, they have to go to the book and say just some people, are, people could, they could go to the book and pull up your national insurance number from the book. But a lot of people, because they were supposed to input this information in the system. So a lot of people information, that's why they don't have minds. A lot of people information not in the system, but they're supposed to be able to go back to, I guess, the manual process that they had in place. But I guess laziness at NIB that people don't do it. Yeah. But a lot of persons has experienced the same thing I have where they couldn't locate their contributions and they had to get letters from their previous employers. And it ends in the year before the individual attained the age of 62. As you know here, like most government workers, they, they, they get their retirement. When they're turning 65, they get their letters like a year before, you know. 
And if they have vacation, they got to take that vacation because, you know, they don't, some people leave it until they leave it, but a lot a lot of persons now are uh, mandated and they're taking their vacation so they could work up to whatever if they if they were to retire in december at least they could work up to december because what they would do is take their vacation now and get it over with because a lot of people have some of those government people have like 20 20 weeks vacation and stuff yeah so yeah yeah but um yeah, so um, 65, a lot of, most persons stay in government until they're 65. I know some people you can work, if you work in government, you can um, leave after you put in a certain number of years, or you could wait till you attain the age of 65. So some people stay, some people leave. And we know for government persons, um, the um, earnings from national insurance is not much, it's minimal. You get some people who, who, who made plenty of money, but they don't get that kind of money from national insurance. They get their money from government, from the, the treasury. So that's where, where most government persons get their the bulk of their um, benefits from um, Ministry of Finance. Yeah. The actual earnings during this period it are adjusted for the changes in average wage level. The resulting figure is called the average index monthly earnings, AIME. And that's what they tell you. So they, I, I just need them to tell me how they work out this, um, um, how they work out your benefits. Because like, um, you don't really know. I try to follow some um, pamphlet they had, but I still couldn't follow it. Yes, I need somebody who does it to really tell me how that it's worked out. From this number, it's calculated the primary insurance amount, PIA, on which all retirement benefits are based. The formula for transforming the AIME into the PIA is intentionally designed to weight to weigh lower earnings more than higher earnings. Benefits payable to retired workers. The initial monthly social security benefits for a retired worker equals the person's PIA if he or she begins receiving benefits at the social, social security normal retirement age. Many retirees elect to begin collecting benefits before the age. However, age 62 is the earliest age at which benefits may be may begin. Like that's in the US, they can begin at 62. We can begin at 60. And like I say before, you're gonna retire at 65 because the maximum retirement age then was 60. So people in the government, people in different um, organization, banks had to retire at 60. That was the longest they could go. The early retirement was 55 and your regular retirement was at 60. And as we see here in the US, it's at 62. And actually reductions of 0.555% occur in each of the first 36 months that a worker, that a worker's retires early, plus an additional 0.417 for each additional month early. This reduction benefits will continue to be payable even after an early retiree reaches the normal retirement age. And like they would say to you, um, you will get the same, no, once you choose to take early retirement, that is your payment throughout the, um, throughout your lifetime. Um, you know, whatever years you have left, it's, it's your payment throughout. So, I see, I selected to take early retirement. So whatever they pay me, that is what I get every month, unless the government increase some $50 here or $100 there. Yeah, so that's what I will get until I cease to exist. 
Benefits for workers who delay benefits until after the normal retirement age are also adjusted through increase for each month later. Yes, and we have people who select, like you have some jobs that I know where I work, where I used to work, I remember like two persons, they worked until they were 66 instead of 65. So they got more money added to their pay, to their benefits because they work later than they should have. So, so they, they got more benefits. Benefits, it's payable to retired workers. It also possible to receive social security retirement benefits without totally exiting the work, exiting the workforce. But limits are placed on how much younger retirees, those under the social security, Social Security normal retirement age may earn before a, before a reduction in Social Security benefits is triggered, can earn up to 11640 per year without penalty. For earnings exceeding this limit, the worker's Social Security benefits is reduced by $1 for each two dollars in wage. Once retiree reach their social security normal retirement age, they may earn an unlimited amount of income and still collect social security benefits to which they are entitled. Only earned income is counted. Funds received from investment, pension, annuities, and interest are not considered in applying the retirement test. Benefits payable to spouse and children. As we know that here and around the world, um, children are entitled to benefits from their, most of the time, the father, um, the father. So they get, um, if they're not at a certain age, they get that benefit. I don't know how much it is. I know a long time ago, it used to be 160. I don't know what it is for every child. So if the children are say five and they get that benefit, I think until they're 18 or 21, not sure, but they continue to get the benefit or if they're still in college or the national insurance here, and I guess it will be the same for the US, will continue to pay um, benefits to the child. And a lot of persons here don't know it. So a lot of them, a lot of women don't apply for it and sometimes because um, the father didn't sign the birth certificate, so it's hard to prove that, you know, that's your father. Yeah, so a lot of women don't get the benefits. A retired worker, spouse, and dependent children may be entitled to social, sec social security benefits based on the worker's earning. The benefits amount for, for a spouse who has attained the normal retirement age is 50% of the worker's PIA. However, spouse can elect, can elect to collect an early age as 62 at an actuality reduced level or at any age if they, they're caring for children under 16. Well, they say, I guess in the U.S. it's under 16. I think here it's up until they're 18, I believe, or when, if they're in college, I think it's still, they still up to 21, they, they, are, the mother can still collect benefits for them. The spouse is not required to be financially dependent on the retired worker in order to collect the benefits. So not because I may make um, $60,000 a year, um, and my husband made 80000 a year, um, not because I have, I make a good salary. That means that I'm not in my children or I'm not entitled to get the benefits that is due a spouse or dependents. But spouses who have earned incomes are impacted by the retirement test in the same manner as for the retirees. Any questions, any concern, any input? Ms. Nan, 
I see you join. Good evening. No questions so far. Miss Barros. No, I'm following. I'm good. Okay. I do have a question. So for, for persons who the government forced to retire, okay, for instance, once you are on the defense force for 35 years, even if you're only right. there, you're only, and um, you turn 54, you, they, you are forced to retire. For the yeah, year. but you still, you should still should be able to get, I guess, your pension because um, remember now, I say with, gov with government, Remember now, with government, they will they get most of their pension from the treasury. You'd see persons who gotcha, work in government. Gotcha. Yeah, if you gotcha. look at their national insurance, you'd be like, "When I see it coming to the bank, I was like, well, gee, that's all they get, all the money they used to make." But then I learned that the treasury pays them their benefits. They get their money from the treasury. So yes, he may retire at 54, but he has to wait until he's 60. Then he can get some of that national insurance benefit. Too. Yeah. Benefits payable to spouse and children. An increasingly common situation is for both husband and wife to be entitled to social security retirement benefits on the basis of their own earnings history. The question arises as to whether such people are still entitled to receive spouse benefits from social security. The basic rules governing these cases, an individual is entitled to receive only the one social security benefit that will be paid for the greatest monthly income. So what what do you think they're saying here? When it comes to what? The husband and wife? Right. Um, whoever's pension is higher, that's who, who money they receive? Yeah, the children. Mm. Yeah. What about the spouse? Well, I'm looking at this day because they're saying basic rules governing these cases. An individual is entitled to receive only one social security benefit that would be paid to the greatest monthly income. I, I'm i looking at this. I was thinking it's only talking to the children. Um, okay. Give me one second, please. Mm -hmm. That's Margaret, Margaret Pinnan collecting too. Where's Annie husband? That's double the best. Hmm. <laughs> That's another class. That's what that is. <laughs> That's just me sipping tea, trying to figure out. <laughs> These tricks. It's okay for them to double dip. Uh, but, mm -hmm. but I think I think that is you though, because her husband would have already contributed. So he she needs his money back. That ain't NIB money. That's the contribution he made. So she made her contribution and he made his. And if he dies, she still survives. I, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes persons, um, like they tell, I think my friend said they told her that she wasn't entitled. Why though? Was it because the amount of contributions or what? everyone is different? Every case is different. Mm, that nigga been waking from me was too. Oh. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I just need to know that. Sorry about that. These little grandchildren, what you gotta be. 
taking care of. Can't do nothing. Oh. You tell her. She in there crying her head off on her daddy because she won't come to her nanny. I'm like, all day I be working, all day I like, mm. yeah, but like I said, I trying to figure out which, which this, because it's, to me, I'm thinking is if the husband made more, they get the benefits from what he made. I, I'm not understanding this portion here, because I'm thinking if the husband made more than the wife, that the children would get who gets who 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 um paid the most the greatest monthly who got the greatest monthly income benefits payable just like how just like how there were two separate individuals putting in two separate amounts yeah the surviving yeah. children should get from both <laughs> especially if they disabled yeah, I'm serious um you have the um, hidden and wife receiving hers on his own, so she might as well only collect oh, one. So must be that's what it is. Well, they get both, I guess. Also, she received hers, plus she received Mr. Pinland on. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, that's true, you know, because but 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 for some people, they told me that they had stopped getting a survivor's benefit. I don't know when the government changed the last time, but a lot of persons said they, they didn't get survivor's benefit anymore. Yeah. Benefits payable to spouse and children. In some cases, children of retired workers are young enough to be entitled to social security benefits. The child's benefit is 50% of the worker's PIA. Eligi eligibility is generally limited to unmarried children under the age of 18. So extended to 19, if a child is, a, like I told you, a student, a full-time student in elementary or high school, age limit is re removed entirely for unmarried children who, be who become severely disabled before age 22 and who continues in that condition. So they're saying that if um, children can get the benefits up as long as they're under the unmarried and under the age of 18. So if they get married, they can't get the benefits no more. And it extended to someone who is 19 or being a full-time student in high school or elementary or in college, high school, age and so and if, if a child as is disabled they can get it up um before who become disabled before 22 and continues with the condition so they can get it forever because it, uh, it isn't removed because of the you know their situation so i guess most of the laws pertain to the same thing as we have it here in, in, in the Bahamas. Now um, we have actually speaking to employees benefit and assistance here, national insurance here in the Bahamas. Employees benefit and assistance Bahamas. The national insurance history, the national insurance board was established in December 12, 1972. With the signing into law of the National Insurance Act 1972, the National Insurance Board, NIB, the organization charged with administering social security program opens the door officially on October 7th, 1974. So they opened the same time as Central Banking, not the same month, but the same year. Its primary mission was and is provide income replacement in respect of sickness, invalidity, uh, mature, uh, maternity, retirement, death, industrial injuries, diseases, and involuntary loss of income. And so we know we saw a lot of that happening when Dorian hit, um, when um, COVID hit. A lot of persons had to get this, had to get unemployment benefit. 
um, from national insurance. We got a lot of persons in Abaco, Freeport, who got displaced. So they, here again, national insurance really paid out a lot of money um, because of these two disasters, you know, unforeseen disasters. And I think right now, and, and remember now, they were saying that a lot of persons who are the new minister, he said that a lot of persons went back to work, but they were still getting paid, going and collecting the checks. Um, and they, they know that, hey, I'm working, so why am I still collecting checks from national insurance? But some people were still doing it. NIB added missions in the administration of the country social security. Social security program is to provide assistance to needy citizens and to assist with the social and infrastructural development of the country. What else does national insurance do? What does national does national insurance provide assistance to other government ministries? Um, I know, I know when a person die, you get, right. uh, I get a, I guess a death benefit. Um, a very, and a then very, when you have a baby, when you get pregnant, you get half, you, you get, you get the one for live birth and right. then yeah. you yeah. get half, you start <laughs> Yeah, you, you get, when I had my last child, um, this is true. I never got one dollar from NIB until after my maternity. I was back to work, and that's when they give me one lump sum check. Whoa! So you could so imagine if, was... if I was someone who these young parents would, would yeah, would would need to help take care of their baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What would what would have happened? But yeah. I wanted to ask, you said the minister said persons were getting um, yeah. checks when they, mm -hmm. well, that's, that, that's horrible on NIB side because how is it that you don't have it in your system to know when you get an income and um, payments so, for a particular right, person right. to NIB? Contributions. Order, yeah, so exactly. that's the You get contributions, right? Ooh. You get contributions. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, that's, that's really kind of sad, yeah. Um, can someone who, Chanel, can you pick up um, from where I was um, and read employment down to the bottom for me, please? I just need to take uh, this little girl. Well, right. administration, hey, you stop at where yeah. you stop. Yeah, you can start there. You're right there, you can start. Okay. Uh -huh. The board reports to the Minister of Government who is assigned ministerial responsibility for national insurance. Currently, cabinet responsibility for national insurance falls within the portfolio of the Honorable Brenzel Rule, MP of Minister of Public Service and National Insurance. Board of Directors, the board is headquartered on New Providence in the Jumbe Village Complex on Blue Hill Road. It is administered by an 11 member board of directors. The National Insurance Board provides 10 cash benefits, four cash assistance and one benefit in time. The benefits are paid in respect of sickness, maternity, funeral, retirement, invalidity, survivorship, unemployment, injury, disablement, and death. The assistance are the old age, non-contributory pension, invalid invalidity survivors, and sickness. Benefits are awarded to insure persons who meet prescribed contributions conditions. Assistance are awarded to the need to needy Bahamian residents who do not qualify for a particular benefit and only after the application of the test of resources. I want y'all help me with this because a lot of persons during the pandemic who tried to um, seek assistance from NIB were turned away because they 
weren't qualified. They didn't work in a certain period of time. So I guess NIB's perspective from that was, well, y'all wasn't working before y'all didn't have no income. What y'all think about that? I don't know. I think that's just what they were thinking. Yeah. They was working under the table. A friend of mine who was working at NIB, she said a lot of them were working under the table. Yeah. So, wow. yeah. Wait, so wait, also, my, my concern, we, there was another pe person who was working, but I guess they weren't working long enough before the pandemic started. And um, they had a break where on their previous job, they claimed um, unemployment benefit. And then they started to work, but because they weren't working, I guess, over a year or so, on their new job and then the pandemic came, they couldn't claim. That so, happened to a lot. Yeah. Okay. Where you at, where you at, Ms. Farrell? I'm on the last paragraph on page 162. Mm -hmm. All right. The monthly rate of payment for the long-term benefits and validity retirement and survivor's benefits varies depending on the total number of paid and or credited contributions from a minimum of 15 to a maximum of 60% of the insured person's average weekly insurable wage or income. The weekly rate for the sickness benefit is 60% of the claimant's average weekly insurable wage or income. 60%, okay. <laughs> The validity benefit is payment made to eligible insured persons who have been certified by a medical doctor to be permanently unable to work as a result of an illness that is not job related. Let me understand this. <laughs> they have all done on the job. Huh? They have all done on the job. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sometimes, you know, you have people who have like certain things just happen. They have lupus. Yeah, yeah. They have um, some sickness, like they have kidney failure. Certain things that don't permit them to work. Um, yeah. Some people have, um, like I say, dif different disabilities that they cannot work. You know. Okay, so the, some so people may not be able to eat. benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I I, I know. Um, someone they 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 do dialysis, and the government was giving them two hundred dollars, I guess, um, benefit where when COVID was really out there. So she said that once now they've stopped it and told her because she can't work because she got to go to dialysis three times out of the week, and then um, she um, she is really doing her really bad and so they told her she has to now fill out the form for disability benefit now and so how long that could take you know they just stopped giving the checks and she relied on it because of her condition so now she has to apply for disability benefit yeah so yeah that's it that's how it is yeah you're not going anywhere Okay, you can continue, Miss okay. Burrows, and so um, finish it. Where am I? Where am I? Hold on. Um, hold on. A person suffering permanent incapacity, incapacity as a result of job-related illness should claim disability benefit. The rate of payment ranges from a minimum of 15% to a maximum of 60% of the insured person's of the insured person's average weekly income. Weekly insurable wage income. The weekly rate for the maternity benefit is what is this? 66 two third percent of the mm -hmm. claimant's average weekly insurable wage or income. This is also uh, a maternity grant, which is a one-time payment given in respect of each live birth. 
To qualify for the payment, the woman must have paid at least 50 weeks of contributions over the course of her work life. A woman who does not have the required contributions, but whose husband has paid sufficiently to meet the conditions for the maternity benefit will be awarded the grant. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I, I never worked, but uh, I worked, but, and then I stopped working and I don't have enough benefits. So, but my husband does. So, and I, I still get able to get that grant. You know, uh -huh. so that's a good thing. And, you know, too, even with, with NIV contributions, when people retire, and for persons who probably haven't worked as long as they should, and they could only get, um, they only, because they only put in a certain number of contributions, um, they, they, they can get a grant, mm -hmm. and the grant will be like a, a lump sum amount. They will not get a monthly payment but they'd get an actual lump sum amount of, of money. So say I only, I didn't, I, I, I fell short of putting in the 500 contribution. So um, I had to put in at least 300 and something to be able to get a grant. So I did that. So my grant could be according to my insurable wage, my grant could be something like a 22, $24,000. And that's a one-time payment, but I will not receive any monthly payment other than that grant. Oh. Yeah, so that's so, that's how so, it is. So what what happened if your husband, if you have a <laughs> husband who's retired and you don't work, uh -huh. and and if your, your husband, husband collecting pension, and you oh, don't work, and, yeah. But what, what would you mean? Well, you 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 never worked. So if the wife don't don't work, <laughs> yeah. and and the husband is retired, right? Mm -hmm. You have a baby for an old man. What happens <laughs> in that? <laughs> this this real life, you know, baby for a grandma. This this real life. This is it is. Office. It is real life because you have some men who, in their <laughs> 70s and they stay they have a young child yeah you have a man in their yeah. 70s and their prime yeah they having children <laughs> yeah so that's true what happens i guess you never work well i guess you he retires so you got to get some of whatever he would was making i guess they still have to look at that <laughs> 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 That is no, kind of no. jokey, cause boy, um, well, I don't work, but, but, but my husband he worked, but now he's retired, and uh, oh boy, that's that's kind of uh, uh, rough there. Hi, Miss Nan, can you pick up from um where Miss um, Burrows left off, please? Yes. So the weekly rate of the maternity. Oh, sorry, we already read that. Yeah. Unemployment Unemploy benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay, unemployment benefit is a payment made to eligible insured persons who are unemployed but actively looking for employment. It is paid at a rate of 50% of the unemployed workers' average weekly insurable income. The rate of the assistance payment is fixed. These have been increased from time to time and will, like other pensions and payment, be increased every two years to reflect or absorb any increases in the cost of living in the country. Under the industrial benefits branch, employed persons or all self-employed persons who suffer job-related injury or contract job-related diseases are eligible for injury benefits, disablement benefit, and or grant, grant industrial mm -hmm. death benefit industrial funeral benefit and free medical care Question. like we all know oh, hold on okay go ahead no i was going to ask the industrial funeral benefit that's the fifteen hundred dollars that they give it's more than that now man <laughs> oh okay <laughs> it's more than that now because uh, you know the funeral home that's the first thing they say oh how much you owe me well we could get that money from national insurance but a funeral so that's part of it. So now they see a balance. Yeah. 
So that's the first thing a lot of the funeral days get them checks and funeral funeral home says get them checks from national insurance. I don't think many, I don't think much persons ever get no check. Uh, they say, okay, I'll use that national insurance benefit and I'll get um get um the balance, I'll pay the difference. Yeah, but um, yeah, and 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 like we know, um with medical care, we know we have NHI. Any of you sign up with NHI? Because I've been hearing the stories with NHI that um, if you, you could try to get an appointment with a doctor who on that listing, and sometimes it could take months. I don't know if any of you want NHI. So I never Me. even signed up. Uh, um, yes, I'm on NHI. Um, yeah, it's months. When I call to use it, but I have my I have my main insurance. I just sign up at NHI like for a backup. I have my me and my son, and I just called one time to see if I could use it, and they was like, "Oh, we don't have no appointment until three three weeks out." So yeah, I think it it it's horrible. Yeah, because a lot of people complain. At least you had three weeks out. You have some people who say three months out. Wow. And, a year, and one year out. Yeah, with some doctors, because certain doctors are on the listing, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Yep, yeah, so, yeah, but I've never signed up with it. So, a lot of persons, like, more um, persons who have um, high blood hypertension, that they do it, because guess what? With that NHI thing, um, and that NIB, that NI, they, they have that NIB hard thing where you go to the pharmacy, uh, I think that's the NHI thing now. When you go to the pharmacy, you're able to get free drugs. Yeah, because national insurance pay for it, so you don't have to actually pay. And a lot of people don't know that. So, because I never even knew um, a hypertension drugs so expensive. I never even knew that. And then people who have other illnesses, the drugs are really, really expensive. And now you know that VAT is now 10% and VAT is on everything. So having to pay for drugs, like I say, for high blood hypertension, diabetes, sickle cell, different stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of really hard. And that's why I say, too, they were saying, um, you know, this, um, you um, have... Um, illnesses that don't relate to disabilities that don't relate to a job because you know when people are sick if you have like sickle cell you have like lupus you you know everybody even people who have cancer you have your moments so sometimes people be off from work for like a year I know somebody it, it had nothing to do with either none of those that I just mentioned they just had anxiety and it was just so much things going on with them. They was off from work for almost two years. They was off from work. And they worked for government, so government couldn't let them go because they, they was all sick for, I think, almost two years. They were all sick from work. Yeah, so they had to collect benefits. Yeah. Continue for me, Miss Nan. Injury benefit is a weekly payment. Paid at a weekly rate of 66 and two third percent of the workers' average in short income. Disablement benefit is paid at a percentage of the injury benefit based on the degree of disablement caused by the industrial accident. Disability is assessed by a medical referee and is expressed in percentages. For disablement assessed in at between 1 and 24%, a grant of $100 is paid for each percent of disability. The disablement assessed at between 25 and 100% disablement benefit is paid at both a one-time cash grant and periodically as a pension. For example, a lump sum grant of $500 and a monthly pension is paid where the disablement is assessed at between 25 and 66%. A grant of $1,000 and pension are paid where the disablement is between 67 and 100%. General benefit. Oh, sorry. Not, uh, this is the one with the funeral, right? Yes. Funeral benefit. At one time payment made 
sorry, a one-time payment made to the person who has paid or is responsible to pay the funeral expenses of a deceased insured person rate $1,680. Um, $1,720 as of July 1st, 2014. But I think it's higher now. I think, I think so. it's gone up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not much. It's twenty-five hundred. When it gone to twenty-five hundred? Yes, yeah, twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five. Yeah. Eighteen fifty. Twenty twenty. Eighteen fifty. Twenty twenty. Getting twenty-five. No oh, man. Uh -uh. Getting all of that. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no, it ain't all of that. I know. It ain't all of that. Yeah, they did all of that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so like I said before, the, the, the funeral home is just be waiting for that. And and they say you must have paid at least 50 weeks of contribution. But they sure so they just have to check to see if you make so if you never pay no national insurance contribution, you don't get the your family don't get that benefit. You are your spouse have to pay it according to this. <laughs> well, I guess some people they spouse pay it so they was able to get the better pay. Continue, Miss 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 Nan for me. Okay. Inval inval hold on. Inval invalidity. Invalidity benefit. A monthly payment paid to the eligible insured person who have been medically certified to be permanently and able to work as a result of illness. Rate. A range of 15 to 60% of average insured wages or in income. To qualify, must, m sorry, must be younger than 65 years and have paid at least 150 weeks of contributions. Thanks, Ms. Nair. Thank you. Yeah, so you see, um, it, a lot of persons who don't work, who haven't contributed, they don't have any benefits. And so imagine you 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 on a job where you work, say you work a construction job. Well, you know, you pay an NIB. Some people pay, and we know nowadays, you just never know that the people ain't pay your contributions until something happened. Like a lot of persons when COVID happened, remember? We had um, fusion. They were, they, the people going to go collect their money um, said I put in my claim now because I'm working. I need that, uh, that unemployment benefit. They find out what you will never pay nothing. What you mean? They've been taking that out of my salary every week. How come it wasn't paid? And that's happened to a lot of persons, and that's why you find that a lot of persons when they go to 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 actually get their contributions to say I contribute and I want uh, okay I unemploy now they. People say to them, well, wherever you worked, um, they never paid a dollar for you. And then uh, some of those people out of business, they out of business. So what do you do? What do you do that? You work at this mom and pop shop and you're paying their money all the time. They taking your money or your salary and they pay. Now mom and pop business closed down. So what do you do? What does national insurance do? Mom and pop closed down. So for back benefits, you have to have a minimum 50 contributions and it's still only $1,500. Yeah. But yeah. That's well, this is probably, this is an old pamphlet though. No, no, no. It, it, it's, it's thing of mine. It's the must be 18 something now. Because I remember somebody said it was more. Yeah, must be 18 something now. I know they yeah. know 2000. But, 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 but I, I, I. No, they know two thousand. And then too, you remember now when the new part when the new government came into power, they say the persons who who make who who got like between four hundred and something, they get an increase a hundred dollars. People who get a, a between this and that, they get fifty dollars. So they, but I I understand that a lot of persons say they ain't get that increase yet. So I know. Some people say, I'm, well, they said he's getting it. We ain't get it yet in January. <laughs> we had some people who was working at Atlantis went back to work because they was only part-time. Well, they was only getting a million, 
minimum hours. They were mm-hmm. under the radar and they was working and still collecting um, unemployment. Yeah. Yep. And that's what I say. That's what the minister spoke to. You know, he said that a lot of persons were still collecting check and they were back to work. And like you said, it was under the radar. And so that's why they, a lot of people, yeah, but I'm um, like, um, I, um, Miss Burroughs, somebody said that, um, how is it NIB um, contributions coming in? So how is it that y'all can't detect, okay, just like they, they say to me when I'm asking why y'all taking so long, they say, because we saw a contribution still came in for you in July, I said, miss, but Delavi couldn't have paid one contribution for me in July because I left them in March 31st, 2021. So they couldn't. So you all, whoever doing the audit or whoever adding up my contribution, they must see, take somebody else's contribution and look at that day number and talk about that's mine. I say, so that, that, that story don't add up, please. So I had to get HR from Fidelity. I had to go call HR and give HR national insurance, the lady number, and they had to reach out to them. I was like, this is just total craziness, you know? And they use all of these excuses to say, not pay me yet. Maternity benefits, a weekly payment made to eligible insured women while they remained at home during the late pregnancy and confinement. Like some people don't remain at home, but some people is work right up to, to their, their, their time. Um, they, they say, no, I work in straight up to my time, so I get all my time home. So people, a lot of persons just work up to their time. Rate 60, 66.66% of average insurer wage income. And you hear when they say insure or insurable, that's what they do. Not what you make, you know, what they say is your wage. Period. Up to 13 weeks could be increased under special, specified, specific circumstances. Um, Miss Burroughs, they, um, anybody who just had young baby, they still allow you, they still giving you, um, you still get 13 weeks? Yeah, you um, get your 13 weeks. Yes, yes, you do. Now, okay. if you get cut, you get more. When? Yeah, my when co-worker, they, she got a C-section, and she was unable they, to come out to her. So I think they, they just got that in. I don't know, but she got extra money. Well, they didn't give me that. <laughs> no, on um, C-section, you get the same amount of time off. But that's what I know. I cannot. <laughs> No, she got it. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same amount of time. My doctor probably gave her more time off. I know you have to pay more money for a C-section. Oh yes, so if you were supposed to have normal birth, and you had a C, and your normal birth was probably one little twenty-five hundred or three thousand, you had that C-section. I've gone to six or seven thousand dollars. Way up there. Yep. Yeah. So it's 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 totally different. When you have normal birth compared to C-section, yeah, it's totally different. To qualify, claimant must have paid 13 contributions in the 26 weeks immediately before the week the illness started, or 26 contributions in the 40 weeks immediately before the week she either stops work or has the baby or 26 contribution in the immediate preceding contributed year. So women get a lot of good benefits from national insurance. I guess um, the only thing is you only get paid for life, but even if you go straight to nine months and the baby die, you don't get any grant for that. You, you don't get anything for that. A one-time payment made to a woman whose pregnancy results in the birth of a live infant. It is paid for each live infant. To qualify, she must have paid at least 50 contributions to national insurance. If she has not paid the required number of contributions, it can still be paid if her husband meets the contribution condition 
for the award of the benefit. But they always say, and us, but, but, but what happens if you're married? What do they do? <laughs> you're married. What happens if you have a child and you're not married? That means you ain't getting nothing. And a lot of women today, you know, they probably get money from national insurance because they're not married and they have not contributed at 50 contributions to national insurance. So they get nothing. Retirement benefit, a monthly payment made to insured persons who have retired from gainful employment or who have attained the age of 65. While full in benefit is payable from the age of 65, persons have the option of receiving benefits from as early as 60, but will be reduced. A range of 50 to 60% of average insurable wage or income depending on the number of contribution paid and or credited. And see, that's why I say, how much contribution that is for me, almost 12 years, you all don't have to my, my added to my benefit. Uh, how how, how y'all can do that? You know, so I got to be the one that keep fighting them for them to go rework my my um benefits to include my 12 year, my almost 12 years contribution. To qualify, must have paid at least 500 weeks of contribution. Right, because I said that, I said, yeah, other than that, you can get the grant. <laughs> you can't get the retirement benefit. Should you fail to, re to meet 500 contributions, conditions for the award of retirement benefit, which is a monthly pension, a one-time retirement grant will be paid to you. Six times average week weekly insurable wage for each set of 50 contributions. Example, if 250 contributions made, an average weekly insurable wage is 400 per week, then the grant is six times the five times 400. So you, your grant will be 12,000. That's all you're gonna get. There's no, um, cause you didn't make 500 contribution. There's no other money coming in every month. You're only gonna get that $12,000 grant. To qualify, must have paid at least 150 weeks of contribution and must have attained the age of 65. And guess what? You can't even get the grant on early retirement. You have to get the grant at retirement, their retirement age of 65. Sickness grant, a weekly payment made to eligible insured persons while they are temporarily unable to, to work due to illness. Rate 60% of average insured wage, a period of 156 days, but cannot exceed cannot be extended to 40 weeks. To qualify, claimant must have paid 13 contributions in the 26 weeks immediately before the week the illness started, or 26 contributions in the 52 weeks immediately before the week the illness started, or 26 contributions in the immediate A monthly payment made to dependent survivors of a deceased insured person. Rate payable in varying amounts to qualified dependents in the priority order widow, widower, dependent children, biological, adopted, stepchildren. So they're saying that your stepchildren your adopted children can also get dependent benefits. Did you know that? So if a husband and wife, a husband died, the wife mm -hmm. is still living and she still have minor children, isn't there a mm -hmm. limited amount? The limited amount, that doesn't work. That can't work. But do you hear what they say? They say, the, it could be the man, children, biological, could be adopted or step. Because, you know, sometimes um, you, you, you may marry someone who have one child or two. And so they're saying of the deceased under the age of 16 or up to the age of 21. And that's what I say, as long as they probably still in college, 
national insurance will still pay them. Um, age 21, if still in full-time school, unmarried, they have to be unmarried, children who are, who are not children of the deceased person, but who, who were wholly maintained by him. And so they'll tell you, as long, even, even in death, um, with, with, um, I guess when somebody dies and, you know, um, trying to say the new laws did now say that, okay, um, this person had five children and he um, said one of those was a stepchild, but he brought that child up. So it's just like his child. So if he died, he had full share now in anything that the, the husband left behind or the father left behind. And the new laws in our country now is that, you know, before they used to say children who are not in the marriage, they're not entitled to anything. But as we know now, children not in the marriage is just as entitled to children in the marriage. So, and that's why they stress a lot of times that persons should ensure that they have will, even though you may have to do a probate, but it's always better to have a will because you know at the funeral, um, you see people in one corner crying, children, you'd be like, who they is? I don't know them. And you get the final, that's the next family. So it's always good to have a will and just have to do the probate, pay for it. But at least a will is in place to say that if X, Y, Z dies, this is for the wife and this is for, you know, the children and stuff like that, you know. And like I say, sometimes some um, wives don't even know that their husband have children there. It's not until the funeral and they find out that, oh yes, he fathered five of them over there. And so, you know, that there is, I guess, uh, a lot to have to take in. So it's good to have your will. So it says under age 16 years or up to 21 and is still in full-time school or where or who are valid, invalid, married, invalids, mar unmarried, orphans under age 16 or up to 21, if still a full-time school and parents of the deceased. Well, like I say, um, the laws are there and you just have to try to work around them by doing what you need to do, by doing your due diligence, by doing a will. How many of you have a will? Because we procrastinate so much and say we're going to put a will in place and we don't. How many do? I have one. I have one. Miss Cartwright? But a trust is better. A trust yes. is expensive. I don't. <laughs> A trust? I'm leaving my money in trust for nobody to take care of my children. No, no. I've seen enough situations where this lady, she died and left the husband leave and the children were very young, probably 10 and 11. She died. She left him in charge. And that man get married to a younger girl. Ask if them children ever get to go to college. No way, Jose. I'm living my money in no trust. Yeah. I say that's why we all have to pray every day. Lord help us to live long enough to see the last child grow to honor and be able to take care of itself. Because but do you know, you know now? Now you have, um, I mean, other than insurances, but if you have like savings, now the kids are able to be added onto your account at a younger age, from age seven, I think it is now. Ooh, that's good. That's yeah, great. So yeah, but 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 yeah, they may be able to add on to it. But what happens if you die in day twelve? No. So you can add them on to see when you add someone on to their to, to the account and one person die, then the other person is the right. owner. Agreed. So in your will, you can note my account, because this is what I did. The account mm -hmm. that's in this child's name. Um, 
I guess, after the age of 18, then legally they would be able to get it. However, my wish is that the age of 21, that those funds are to be um, distributed or after college or whatever stipulation you want to put in place. But technically, after 18, if they are the only owner on the account, then nothing you can do. They party in like a rock star. That's what this too. <laughs> well, well, I I rather my children party like a rock star and like Agreed. you say, your husband go find an ex woman and the woman party in like a rock star. Oh. Party like a rock star, everybody. I remember my husband used to, my husband used to say when I well I separated, but he used to say, um, if I die, him and him and Shirley can go and cruise all my money. I say yeah, and I am sure <laughs> never. <laughs> Never. Oh, but a lot yeah, of women, it happens. It happens, yeah, you know, it, yeah, it happens. Yeah. And that's why every account that I have, I have my children on it. And yeah. I did a will. I did a will. I sell my grown children, the bigger ones. I say, all right, you have a, you have apartments, you have a house, the baby, he ain't get nothing. So I leave 15% to you, 15% yeah. to you, and 70% to him. You, you know that. I need to leave yeah. that to you. Yeah, so that's what I do. I did my will. I remember I did my will in September. I keep putting it off. And then I was traveling to my son in the U.S. I say, hey, let me go do my will. I did my will. I keep procrastinating to go sign it. But I went the day before I travel. I went and signed my will. Because <laughs> I our, heard so much stories. Our, our, culture, people. our culture here is that <laughs> Bahamian culture is we feel like if we go and do a we will, then that's a death wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's and question. that's why and that's why what happens to us we we die we die and the family all fighting over the children it, 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 it's so amazing that when death is is there you never know families just have so much so much problems to be like whoa and it happens in a lot of families and so i always say it's good to have your will I never do a no trust because ain't nobody can be in charge of no trust and you will be talking about taking my money to take in my jury. No way, Jose. Like you say, Miss Burroughs, I'm have it where when they reach a certain age, that's what happened. Because like I say, that's a true story, this lady, because this sister talked about, she talks about it all the time, how the husband born and marry a younger girl and the children never get to go to college. She spent up all the children money it would have been my daddy, but boy, would have do him in. What? You spend my money? Sad. That is sad. It is. It is because she died and she had a good job. And so she left a lot of money for those children. Wow. And in trust for him, you know, to, 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 to deal with it. But like I say, that's that's why we have to make sure we put, you know, a will in place. Yeah. Shall I tell my husband the same thing? I said, I love you and you love me. But if somebody died, then we could be in love with somebody else. And Thank I don't you. know what what could stray your mind or <laughs> from. And, and you know, you and you know, the children, the children, they forget the children, and then if they remember that then the woman reach along or the man reach along and be like, oh, oh, a child, I love him. I forget uh -huh. the children. Uh -huh. No uh -huh. way was it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's like so I say, sad, but that's the reality. You don't want to think it, think of it like that. But, but it is. But it is. That's the reality. And when you have kids, you have to think, you know, yeah. down those lines. You have to. to. Miss Cartwright, can you um read unemployment benefits for me, please? Who name me call Miss Smith? Cartwright. Oh, okay. Unemployment benefits, a weekly payment made to eligible insured persons who are unemployed but actively looking for employment. It is not paid to self-employed persons, voluntary insured persons, summer students, or persons that are partially employed. For example, on reduced work days. The rate, 50% of the unemployed workers average weekly insurable income period paid so long as unemployment continues to a maximum period of 13 weeks within a 52 week period to qualify must be younger than the age 65 
years of age and able to satisfy the Department of Labor condition for registration. In addition, at the date at the date unemployment began, must have been able to satisfy three contribution conditions. One, paid at least 52 contributions into the National Insurance Program since it started in 1974. And two, paid and or being credited with at least 13 contributions within the 26 weeks immediately before the week in which you were last employed. And three, paid and are being credited with at least seven contribu contributions in the 13 weeks immediately before the week in which you were last employed. Contribution. I never even knew. One second, Ms. Arbert. I never even knew that when I stopped working at Fidelity because I was under 65 that I could have gotten unemployment benefit for 13 weeks. I never even knew that. And, and the, the lady who worked at National Insurance, she said, you could have been collecting National Insurance benefit because, um, you know, for 13 weeks because you stopped working before you were 65. I was like, what? I never even knew that. So people who know it, I guess they're able to collect it. Somebody I know, they got let go of their job and they were 62. And so I guess she, she, when she said she was applying, she was going to apply for national insurance benefit. I was like, for unemployment benefit, I said, oh, but I thought you could only apply if they, if, if, if uh, um, you leave. I, I just couldn't believe it that you could actually get unemployment benefit as long as you're working and you're under 65. I didn't know that. You can go ahead, Ms. Barbary. Okay. Contributions. C10 file spreadsheet contributions are required for each contribution week. A period of seven days from Monday to Sunday. Payments are based on the wages earned during the week up to an insurable saving, currently $600 as of July 2012. See contribution table. Contributions are to be paid monthly and shown to receive into the board by the 15th day of the month following the month they were due. Employed persons, contributions are to be deducted from the employed person's wages before they are paid. Deductions are payable from the very first salary payment, even if the worker is serving out a probationary period. Contributions not deducted at the time they were due cannot be claimed from employers' future earnings. The employer is solely responsible for payment of arrears. Wages include basic pay, inclusive of pay in lieu of notice, and formally paid tips, gratitudes, Compensation such as bonuses, overtimes, and severance and severance severance are not considered wages. Contributions for per for persons who are paid on a commission basis will be based on the average weekly or monthly wage in the last year or total wage paid in the actual week or month concerned. Contributions for person paid on a daily or piece work basis will be based either on the basic amount paid for similar work or on the total cash amount paid for the actual week or month, whichever is less. The rates of contributions are 3.9 for employee and 5.9 for the employer. Self-employed persons. Before January 2011, there were two cases of self-employed persons, those in class A and those in class B. The persons in class A paid contributions at a rate of 6.8%, while, while persons in class B paid 8.8% of, in, of their average and short income up to the ceiling. Only the latter category was entitled to industrial benefits, was, but as of January 2011, the two classes pay contributions on the same rate, 8.8, .8, and are therefore eligible for the same benefits. A self-employed person you. must... Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any questions, any concerns on what Ms. Godway just completed? Complete reading? Ms. Knowles, Ms. Burroughs, Ms. Brown. I don't see Ms. Brown Knowles. Yeah, I don't see her. Any questions? Not for me, no. Contributions. A self-employed person must determine at the beginning of each year what he or she, which his her income level for the payment of contribution will be that, that year. The projection must be reasonable as it will be subject to review of NIB. So persons who are self-employed, they can't just pull up. Uh, figure out their heart and say, okay, this is what I think I can make. I guess they have to have some kind of portfolio, some kind of budget showing that, okay, this is what I hope to earn. This is what I hope to spend. Because NIB will review it. Pensionable civil servants before Jan July 2013, and because of the integration of the government pension plan with the national insurance pension plan, civil servants who were eligible for pension out of the consolidated funds paid less international insurance for retirement and invalidity benefits. Their contributions were based on, on a contribution of $110 reduced for the two long-term benefits and whatever the prevalent ceiling, prevailing ceiling was at any given time for all or other benefits since the July 2013 change, pensionable civil servants paid contributions the same as other employed persons. Contributions, person with dual employment, only one contribution payment is required for, for a worker. During any contribution week, therefore, persons with two or more employers are only required to have one contribution paid for, for them. But the principal employer, the principal employer is, the gen, is generally the first employer to whom the worker reports or the employer who pays the wage first during a contribution week. Did you know that if you have two jobs, only one person, not the, only one employer has to pay? Yes, ma'am. I never knew that. <laughs> I never knew that. That okay, so I have a uh I work as a teacher and then I have a part-time job where I work as a waitress at a restaurant. So where I, at the restaurant they don't have to pay no national insurance to me, just my teaching job. I never knew that. I just thought both, 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 both paid. Persons in receipt of retirement benefit. A person aged 60 to 64 who is in receipt of retirement benefits may return, continue to work, and receive the benefit as long as he or she earns no more than half of the insurable wage ceiling. Additionally, persons aged 65 and older may work and receive retirement benefits no matter what they earn. In the case of self-employed persons, however, they must have initially retired from and re then return to gainful employment to qualify. In either cases, reduced contributions of 2% must be paid. For employed persons, only the employer is required to pay. Contribution, voluntarily insured persons and unemployed persons who contribute at least 500 contributions to national insurance may apply for permission to pay contributions voluntarily. Contributions are paid at a rate of 5% or of the individual average wage earning based on his, her last year of employment. Contributions are due before June 30th of each year. Contributions paid voluntarily do not count for sickness, maternity, unemployment, or any industrial benefits. The privilege of paying a voluntarily insured person is afforded only to the person reside, res, reside resident in the Bahamas 
and the application for permission to pay must be made within a year of contributing as either employed or self-employed. And now we see our little smart card. All of you have your smart card, NIB smart card registration. Each of you have that? I don't. I lost yes, mine. Somebody it stole mine. Yes, I have it. Somebody stole mine. And, hmm. uh, national insurance, I haven't gotten it yet, so I'm not worried. NIB smart card registration. All persons engaged in gainful employment in the Bahamas, whether employed on a temporary, probationary, part-time, or permanent basis, are required to register with the national insurance. Registration should be undertaken before or as soon as possible after commencing work. Additionally, businesses, employers, and persons claiming benefits or assistance, even if they have never worked, must register. The registration process involves the assignment of numbers for files, which creates an account into which all records of contributions and benefit payment will go. This national insurance number is distinctive and personal. Its digits include represents, representation of the years and the quarters of registration, registrar, the registrant birth, the local office at which he or she register and his or her sex. Like you say, Miss Knowles, that's what it is. Yeah. But like you also say, you have persons who have the same national insurance. When you say persons who have the same national insurance, Miss Knowles, exactly. is that Apparently, persons employed with the bank or persons who you see coming? No customers. Right. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. So what do you do in that case? What do y'all do in that case when y'all, uh, you know, you have that scenario? We had a project that we had to do. We had to pull all the duplicates, call those customers in, let them know what was happening. Because what, what, tricked it, what tipped it off was someone's money was coming in to pay their credit card. Your credit card um, account number is your NIB. So that money was sitting on the NIB not paying that particular customer's account. And then they called the person who they thought money it was to give it back to them. Customer said, well, I never had a, I never had a loan or a credit card. So we had to hold back and check. And then we realized we had two persons with the um, same NIB. <laughs> so what happened so was when they have two persons with the same NIB, whoever mm -hmm. was inputting would have put a zero in front of one of them. Whoa, yeah. but that's why I'm saying. So, what happens to so much people who, who now with the benefits? And, and that's why I say they make so much silly errors, errors that they could have avoided. Because I just don't understand. And how who doing the checking? How come none of this was picked up? And you know? it also had something to the person's contributions um, and reference right. to their work. Yeah, right. so that was, that, uh, it was like two or three things that was affected and the person came back and told us thank you because she was, she didn't pay, it had her not paying national insurance for about, I think it was like six years. She didn't make any contribution, but she was working for six years. Yep, and they had me uh, paying them for almost 12 years, so, yep, yeah. Once a number is assigned to the registrar, does not have to register again, even if changing jobs, moving to a new island, or changing changing names. The national finance, the national insurance funds comprises trust funds belonging to the national insurance board contribute contributors. The trusteeship principles of safety, yield, and liquidity applies to all investment of the fund. Hell, hence, all investment of funds are required to meet these criteria. The funds must be invested so as to adequately meet both the present and the future costs of benefits and assistance. Total reserve invested can be categorized as either cash or non-cash investment. As we know, national insurance, and I think national insurance is one of the big investors because they invest with, with all the banks. 
most banks would, would have national insurance account and a lot at times national insurance and their simple ones and stuff like that but we also when i ask the question about national insurance that um who do they assist national insurance remember years ago ministry of housing for these housing projects got a lot of money from national insurance i wondered if they ever paid them back you know because they, a lot of um monies were loaned to national from national insurance the ministry of housing to help with those um, housing projects. And that's why you'd hear some people say, oh boy, national insurance ain't gonna have no money to pay people out, but I, I could never see that happening. Just like I cannot ever see us not being able to pay our debts, the country debt, because if we're collecting so much money in VAT, now VAT is 10% granted, yes. Um, everything is on, um, bad is on everything now. So we, why is it that we should ever not be able to pay our, 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 our bill, our debt on a monthly basis? You know how much money when you go to the food store, one person paying for that. Imagine how many persons go to the food store having to pay for that. Now I see the Ministry of Finance is now saying, in land revenue is now saying that, persons who have houses, mortgages, and who owe real property tax, they're not gonna be sitting down with the banks. I did, they did that several years ago, many years ago when Paul Adley was the Minister of Finance or he was up there, he was in the ministry and they started where they were, actually all the banks were just debiting people account, adding on real property tax, whatever you owed um, the government, but adding it on. You And you know, at one point they had a threshold as to say persons who have homes under this amount don't have to pay real property tax. But when they started that, that exercise, they were debiting everybody's account. So persons who didn't know that their accounts were being debited, like people who don't really check up on their mortgages, they didn't know, but I remember somebody that they say, hey, hey, my house is um, 125000 Oh, my thing, why are you debiting my account? Why asking the bank why the bank debited their account for real property tax? So that's something now, this is another exercise they say they're going to be doing, but how could they do this when um, they, the last time they did it, they, 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 they made a boo boo. So I hope this time when they decide to do it, it's done the correct way. No, what they're doing now is they're sending mm -hmm. persons, they're, they're, they're sending out a listing of persons who need to come into inland revenue. Now, persons who, um, who owe, they are sending letters out to them and they're giving them a period of time to mm -hmm. pay. If not, they can put a lien against the property and they're doing what the U.S. does. If you also- But I hope, they do it. I hope they do it to the people who really could afford it because when the new government come into power, they were saying that a lot of wealthy persons weren't paying real property tax. Yeah. So, yeah, so what they said they're gonna do now is they're gonna, um, for seniors, and it's a lot of senior persons too. Okay. They're gonna um, give them 50% reduction. I know a friend of mine, her dad owes over 40,000 in real uh -huh. property tax. So they gave him a reduction. Um, um, this would have been under F and M though. They gave them the reduction of 50%, which in you will only have to pay two. And, but now that the new government come back, they say they don't know nothing about no reduction. So. I don't know. That's something else. So um, Miss Noel that he allow they allow him to pay that reduce. Okay. Miss Knowles, can you continue for me, please? Just, I just need to stop for a second. Can you continue? I think I stopped where um a total income of national insurance program. Continue for me, please. Where which one is that? Oh, I see it. Okay. The total income of national um, insurance. The second paragraph in finance. Yeah, okay. The total income of national insurance program is spread between different rev, uh, reserves to allow for payment of benefits and assistance under various categories. And all fund investments are spread between short, medium, and long-term placement so as to match 
corresponding future benefit obligations. They'll have money for us. Finance. Categories of investment are as follows. Bahamas government registered, registered um, stock, treasury bills, bank deposit, long-term bonds, loans to quasi-government corporations, equity investments, and net investment and direct financing lease. That's where they, how they seek the money. The appeals process. NIB has an appeals provision for claimants and contributors when, in their opinion, their, their board makes unfavorable decisions regarding them. This provision allows individuals to take decisive actions which could un ultimately change or rescind decisions of the board. It is compromised of three processes. Firstly, there's a process that deals with contributions and classification of insured person. Such cases are heard by a committee of the board of directors. The second process involves an appeals tri tribunal where any questions related to benefits or assistance is decided. The tribunal is tripartitioned um, body made up of lawyer as its chairperson, one member uh, to represent the employee's interest and the other to represent the employer's interest. Members of the tribunal are independent citizens of the Bahamas. And the third process is for medical appeal. In the process, medical questions are determined by a medical referee who is chosen from a panel of medical practitioners from the community. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, um, I'll continue. The offenses. The National Insurance Act describes the number of offenses from which persons may be charged. These basically concern contributions and benefits. Contribution of offenses are, for example, non-payment of contribution, failure by an employer to provide information on an employee wage status, the victimization by an employer or an employee who cooperates with national insurance. Benefits offense are, for example, when a claimant attempts to alter documentation where a person present presents him herself claiming a benefits to which they are not entitled. Penalties to offender, offenses range from a minimum of six months in jail or a fine of a thousand. Dollars or both to a maximum of 12 months in jail or a fine of 2500 or both. I never knew that um, people could go to jail for that. So we've completed chapter 10. Chapter 10. So we have left any questions, any concerns. I will send out to you probably maybe Thursday an uh, um, assignment on questions on this chapter. And like I say, um, most of the questions if y'all have gotten for assignments um, on the second half after the midterm, you will see in the final exam. So I have not decided whether I'm gonna do a review sheet, but like I say, whatever questions you get for assignment, so you will see them in the exam. Any questions, any concerns on this chapter? Hello? No questions. Okay. When is when is have, this when is this due? Um well I told you the other one is not due till next week, right? The other two. Um well, like I say, we'll we probably next Friday, but like I say, these will, I, I just want them to be due so I could mark them so y'all can have them. So y'all know y'all on the right track. And I think that's even better for y'all when it comes to doing the exam, because you would already have your assignment question, your, your assignment questions. And once you answer them and review them properly, you should be fine. All righty. Okay, so um, 
Our final chapter is chapter 11, but next class we can go over any concerns you may have from the other chapters um, before, um, before the exam. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All righty. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.